One of the reasons we thought this competition was important was because there's so many catastrophic stories about the future and my research looking into how people respond to negative or positively framed information shows really, really clearly that if you overdo the catastrophe, a lot of people just switch off. Um, they get scared, it's easier not to think about it or sometimes they feel manipulated or they think it's preachy. And one of the things, um, I was at a meeting with Caroline Lucas last year and she was saying, and my research completely supports this, that we need positive stories. We need stories that show what a sustainable society might look like, um, that acknowledge that the problems, but sort of show what kinds of things we might do about it. So I thought fiction would be a really great way of doing that. Every time I thought myself, when have my attitudes been changed? When have my attitudes been changed about, say, transgender or about gay people or about the environment? It's always been through a book I read, fiction, something I've seen on telly, a sitcom. And this is where we need to, to do it. So the aim of the competition was to try and encourage writers to imagine a world that is sustainable. Or even just take today's world, but focus on characters, maybe sub-characters, that are doing interesting things to make the world a bit better. Because I think quite often characters in fiction that are at all green are like really priggish or they're sanctimonious or irritating. But what about characters you like? that are doing good things. So the challenge was to try and write a story that smuggled in perhaps some sustainable practices, policies, characters, not necessarily as the focus of the story, but sometimes just as the backdrop. So this short story competition was kind of proof of concept. We got great stories. Um, we're going to produce an anthology now based on the, the 25 best coming out next year. I think we call it Resurrection Trust and Retreat West are going to do it. But our ambitions are greater than that. We want to put the royalties from that towards bigger prizes. We want full-length novels, we want stage plays, we want radio plays, we want TV series, um, sitcoms, stuff that's really going to reach the, the mass public. So um, we've got a little bit of it set up. Now I think we've got a radio producer who's agreed they will read the winning entries and consider them for production. I'm trying to locate an uh, independent perhaps TV production company who's willing to do the same. Someone in a position to commission plays, uh, commissioning editors, literary agents. So we've got a means by which the winning entries can actually be considered for production or publication. So that's something we're working on at the moment. And um, also looking for sponsors for the prizes, so it's not just a few hundred, but it's much more, so we can attract the, the very best writers to imagine sustainable futures. So we've got a thousand nailed already. Um, so we're looking for you know, companies, organizations that share these values of sustainability and positivity and, and creativity to, to sponsor a prize and, and help make it happen. I think our Green Stories website is worth mentioning, www.greenstories.org.uk, because we've used that as a medium to kind of showcase some possible sustainable solutions, some ideas that could be transformative. And we include in that things like the circular economy, sharing economy, the well-being index, um, sustainable food, sustainable agriculture, sustainable energy, and lots of ideas about how they could be either the focus of a story or in the backdrop of a story. So that's been a great resource for writers, and we found that a lot of the writers who submitted their entries had referred to that, which, which is great. So it's a way for us as a university as well to disseminate some of our research and ideas to a wider public through fiction.